Hey guys, today we're gonna try to paint um, green onyx marble on the wall as my wife doubted me that I can't do it so I'm gonna put this to the test. I could be on the couch or I could get lucky. Alright, so this is the pattern we're gonna paint on the wall, bathroom wall. Uh, if I mess it up, I'll call the professional, come in and do it. Um, I guess I can call myself a project for dummy. So we got a table here that we need to match and also there's a five play here that I did uh, about I don't know, maybe four or five years ago me and my wife did this. That was crazy but we got it done. Anyway, there's a little face right there. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to try to get away with what I can to match as much as I can. I'm not going to go crazy over it, but um, you know, if you don't try it, you never know. So I'm going to put myself to the test today. Uh, and we'll go from there. And uh, let's see if we can match something up. All right, I'm going to try to show you as much as I can. If I fail, at least I try. So here's some steps that we need to do first. All right, guys, um, this is what we're going to do today. This is my leftover paint from the garage that I have it for a little while now. Um, first, we need latex glove, of course, we need those. so. There's no paint's gonna be on your hand or anything. And some this dishes, my, my wife's gonna kill me if you know I'm using her sponge. Um, you can cut it down to size where you feel comfortable to use it. Um, and we need some brushes for a marble line. As you can see, um, some of them got some little line on there, so we need a little brush. Uh, you can use anything, a um, brush or uh, a little knife to scrape it, or whatever you feel comfortable with. But I'm just going to try these guys. And a three quarter inch brush for some bigger wing. And a three inch brush to smear it. Smear the line. And here's the pattern that we're going to try to aim on. And here's some paint that we got. We have uh kind of like green color that I got left over and there's some brown and there's some yellow uh and also there's some uh, uh I'm not sure what that is probably a cranberry or a uh deep scarlet but anyway it's kind of red it's up red and also we got a burgundy uh before I did this I know the bathroom is really really uh, a play for actually it's a guest bathroom downstairs so if I screw this up everybody's gonna it's gonna know I did a bad job and I try to do what I can especially for the first uh, project I do before I did it um, last night I spent some time and tried to do some uh, little test and uh, demonstration so this is what I did. Um, it took me probably about an hour and a half to figure it out. So I think I'm ready for a challenge here. Uh, my son's gonna help me out. He's gonna be the cameraman, and uh, I'll start painting. Okay, here we go. All right. So basically, we just got plain wall all the way to the ceiling. Um, we kind of. First, we're going to apply the green and a little bit of uh, burgundy weighing on there, uh, brown actually. Yeah, not burgundy, it's the uh, green and the brown. I'm going to do that, I apply all over the place and come back and let you know. Uh, as you can see, the walls are plain. Alright, I'll be back. I'm going to apply those two colors on there. Alright guys, 
so I did apply the green and some weighing on there all the way to the ceiling so uh, so now let's have some fun I'll go grab my son all right so remember the sponge that I was telling you dip into the water a little bit uh, and then here's some white paint and we did apply the green and also the brown on there so now I'm gonna dip a little white uh, to the sponge here and it's kind of clean a little ass out and just go in circle just circle just like so Circle, circle, just go circle everywhere until you got some pattern to play with. Again, repeat your step, just go in circle. Gonna blend the back down here, go right along the line there. This better be work. My wife gonna kill me. But you never know. If you don't try. Don't give up. Look around until Just picture yourself where is the good look for those created pattern. But if you just lay on top of each other, give yourself a little space, it'll find itself. Okay, now you, since you got out a pattern like that, you want to turn the sponge backward where there's no axis that, that you have any paint on there. You want to go back and just smear everything up. And you can still see the line there, which is good. You can leave those lines on there. Same thing here. And also here. And this one's still wet. You just pull it right back out. Some off. I don't think you can make any mistake by doing this because there's so many patterns in this marble green on it. I try to go on YouTube and try to search for this uh, so I can learn more and paint about it. I don't seem to find one out there. I'm pretty sure a lot of people like this color, but it just probably think it's too hard to do it so um, if I can do this I can sh if I can share this video and help other people um, that would be great um, sometime a good video will help some people that need help out there that wanted to do things YouTube come in handy nowadays. You can find pretty much everything on YouTube. So anyway, you go around like that and then you just smear back down. If you got a little white line go around there, don't worry about that. That will be good because it's going to blend in with the next pattern, next color that you apply to it. You can create any kind of look you want. Just Relax and have fun and you'll be fine. By the way, keep your wife away from you until you're done.
Oh, why should I? I don't want that over there. Why does it have to be circle? You know. So sometimes it's good to uh, wait until it's almost done and surprise her. You either get a nah, uh, yeah. So that works. Yeah, a uh, yeah instead of nah. Uh, my wife is pretty good, so but sometimes things don't go their way, they can get ugly. Anyway, just pull back after you're done. You see all those white axes there? Don't worry about it. It'll fix itself later. Kind of smear in, blend it, blend it together, but try not to blend the line here because that's the line you want it to show. In the back here, it's okay to blend them because you can always put some more layer on top there and uh, just try to blend it together. Make sure your sponge is always moist. Otherwise, you rub nothing but just dry sponge. It doesn't work very well that way. And gotta have some white color on there. Same pan, re same repeat over again. So now we come back with the green, same sponge, dip a little bit green and rough it off. Make sure you don't have too much access on the sponge there. Oh, you have too much green, so you want to hold the sponge in a uh, fold in half and then you want to go right on top of the old one you did earlier. Just go underneath there about oh, three quarter of an inch and just circle around those rings and go back and blend them out. Trying to stop where the other ones start. And before it dry, turn the sponge around, not where the one that have paint. Um, turn the other side and pull it down. And when you got stuff like that, don't worry about it. It'll smear right out. Wipe it up right away is the best way to do. But pull it down. So you still create those line look, and then pull back and forth, and then kind of circle around it when it starts to dry up, and repeat this process with the other pattern that I got right here. This one is start from the top, go down. We too much a lot of water on there, but that's okay. You can wipe it off and start over. That one's wet now. I should turn the other side. Since that spot is wet, I'm gonna go down here. Create another line look underneath here. Smear it out a little bit. I want to leave that one to dry up so I come down here, create another look. And again, go to the other 
side of the sponge and just pull it down. Gently pull it down and then circle around it. So it blend out. You see you start to form form together. It was easy to lay down the pad the next time we come around here. So I'm just gonna continue to work my weight up there for a little bit and then I switch the color back to white. So like this guy here, let's form this guy. Just circle around, circle around it. Don't worry if you got off a little bit, you can always come back and redo it. Just relax and have fun. And this one, send the pattern look upside down, you need to pull them up, but not all the way because you're gonna, gonna run over the other's pattern. That's not good. And when it start to dry up a little bit, then you can do it. You know, dry up a little bit now. Now you go around. Just to smear it down a little bit. You can still see those lines, but that's okay. That's what you want. Because you want to build a pattern on your background to be a little busier. And then, same repeat over again on this one. Just circle around, not enough paint, go grab some more. Go back, circle around, circle around. Just relax and have fun. And then this one you pull up because the pattern's on the bottom. That one pulled down a little bit. And smear it out. You can see the pan is starting to look busy, so that's good. And now I'm going to apply one more, and then I'm going to change the color. So you go around, leave yourself some space there for a line look. Alright, so now um, we're going to switch color to white and you can use any kind of white you want. Right now I'm using high gloss white. I don't think it's going to end there. i got a few more flat out there and semi-gloss. But anyway, I'm going to start with the gloss white here. Like I say, it doesn't matter what it is because you're going to apply the clear coat over it. So now I'm creating an extra line on this one. So you want to dip as much as you can to your brush. And then kind of hold the tip of your brush to where you want your line to be. Again, three quarters is a start, so just roll them gently. To create a line look. Sometimes you can just drag and come back with a three inch brush and blend them right down a little bit. Let's see where my brush is. Alright, so three inch brush. You want to come in and just use the tip of the brush and just kind of tap in and pull down a little bit where you want the line is. 
and don't go over too far. It's okay to miss it a little bit because you know there's always more coat going on top of this. Just kind of tap in at the moment. You don't want to pull anything, just tap. And it's good to have some extra rag or cloth or whatever to wipe the excess on the brush off and then go back and tap. Tap most of the wet spot out, the high spot. And when you start to get all that out, you want to go across, gently, side to side. It's okay if you see those white line across there, that's okay, that's the natural marble look. And after you go side by side, you want to go up and down, up and down, until it starts to form up. Nothing to it. Just relax your mind. And just play with the brush until it forms together and start to dry up. You don't want to have it too dry, otherwise you can't remove it out with the sponge. And again, now you put your brush away, come back with a wet sponge, not too wet. You want to have some water in there and then just kind of squeeze it out a little bit and come over and try to go over the top gently and if you see it start to come off you put some moisture on there and start to come off like right here and you just want to take some spot out not all the way out just enough to create that line look don't stay in one spot otherwise you take the bottom out and just try to take the the middle line, because you don't, don't need that. Try to take the middle out. It's good to switch them. And when you get the middle one out, you just go from side to side, kind of clean the surface up a little bit, up and down. And now I start to have that marble look. Now you see I don't like this line right here, so what I do, I use my finger to press down the sponge. And it's kind of push down and push up and pull off a little bit like this. So what I do, I just clean up the line a little bit. Make it look a little, a little bit like original marble instead of just a line. So just use your imagination and you know, play around with it, nothing to it. And same thing on this side, I, I don't like it too much. So I'm using my left hand, doing the same thing, push down and pull up until you have those area open up and create it look like a marble vein. At least it doesn't look like that right now until you apply a few more stuff on there. Just play around and have some confidence with yourself and you know, you can do anything you want. If you fail one, try it again. Okay, so now I think I like where it is, so I'm just gonna go over it, circle around, kind of, kind of clean the axis out a little bit. And that's my line. And then I come back with my small brush again, uh, with a white, and I repeat what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you a few more of these and then then I continue these and I come back with you. So uh, same thing, try to create those line look. But this time I'm probably just gonna do one side, show you, show you that um, different technique here. I did it last night. Come back with a three inch brush, make sure it's dry. And what you wanna do, same thing. Um, on the pointy here, you just want to press on the tip of your brush, press, tap it in and pull it down. Tap it in, pull it down, okay? Tap it in, pull it down. Repeat that process all the way through. And this one got a lot of paint so I can move up a little bit. 
just want to tap in, move sideways because it's coming down. You don't want to pull it down, otherwise it'll smear everything out, which is okay. You just need to go back and fix it. You try to get the high spot up. And you don't want to pull too far because you want it to blend with the other color. So. Nothing to it. So I'm trying to come back with a rake or cloth or whatever you got on handy. Sometimes I just beat her with my, my jeans. My wife hate that. But anyway, come back here and pull a few more. And then go side by side gently. Same repeat over again. Don't worry about the axis there. Um, you can always clean up later. You see you start to form out. And then you can go up and down, create those line look. See this line look up here? Those are natural. It looks like natural. So, okay, so now you got these things kind of dry up. How do you know it's dry up? I tell you. Um, if you brush a little harder, there's no no paint that you can remove, that means ready for you to wipe them up down. So I think I'm waiting for that one. Same thing, repeat process. Uh, not too wet, but you have to have some moist on your, your sponge. Any sponge will do a kitchen sponge. My wife gonna kill me about this one because the sponge is always missing. Um, any sponge will do it, uh, or maybe even a, a wet rag, uh, you know, just practice. And first you go over like this to moist the area down. And after you got it moist, you kind of work your way around, not to where the line is. If you don't have enough water, you just turn around. Don't take up the line, just take up the one under the line. It all come off, it just take a little time. You see how it start to form? Yeah. And if it doesn't come out, apply a little pressure to it, it will come off, like this one. Sometimes you probably have to use more water, but again, don't go over the line. Because if you go over the line, you have to redo the line over again. It's okay to go behind the line here because that's what you want. You can always apply the one behind the line. Actually, I wait a little too long on this one. It's kind of a little hard to take it off. But, you know, practicing, the more you practice, the more you know. So, it depends on the temperature in your house. If it's too hot, if it's a little warmer, then it dry a little faster. So, you basically you just want to you just want to figure out how fast your paint dries and just follow that. There you go, and then you just wipe up the axis. Okay. Alright, just keep repeat. You stay with the same pattern, same color, keep repeat like that, and I come back and show you how to put on a different color.